October 9th, Rob, was the night that The Athletic uh, and I broke the story about all the allegations involving Greg Marshall, uh, that he punched Jack Morris in October, Midnight Madness, that day of October of 2015, that he choked an assistant coach, Kyle Linstead, the next year, that he made uh, racist statements, uh, Native American kid um, on the team, Poor Bear uh, Chandler, uh, told him to get back on his horse and made Indian howling noises, body shamed a kid that I'm not going to say his name and I kept it quiet. Uh, but his dad told me he was in his basement for the last three years. Um, so emotionally distraught from everything he had gone through playing for Greg Marshall. Uh, Shaq, Morris and Ty Taylor both told me on the record uh, about the, the punch. Uh, the investigation started more than two months ago. Uh, Tooth Keeney was the, the firm they hired. But the problem was, Rob, that th none of the kids, none of the players from that year, 2015-16, would talk to him. I was talking to all these players, and they were saying, listen, we don't trust the law firm. We don't know whether they're, they're pro marshal. We just didn't get a good feel. So nobody really talked to the investigator until in the last maybe week or so. So that's why this investigation has dragged out. Now, my sources tell me last week, Monday, Tuesday, multiple players finally spoke to the investigators. Right. So, and, and multiple ones uh, recounted the incident with Shaq Morris. Yeah. So I think something is coming down here soon. Uh, it's got to be. I mean, again, we're two and a half weeks in at this point. The investigators have all the information now on the record. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what what he listen. He was never suspended. He's still coaching the team. Still coaching the team, which is so insane. Uh, it's so insane. He, yeah. he should be fired. And honestly, to me, just from reading the stuff that the Wichita State kids have said, yep. I, I know a guy. His name's Sheldon Bailey. He played at yeah. uh, at Winthrop. Good yep. guy. Like now he's he's an actor on Hollywood. Really good dude. I, I've done some. How do you know? Stuff. Because we filmed something for NBC last November for the Olympics for three on three. And he was one of the guys that played and we were demonstrating the rules with really? uh, a guy named Rutledge Wood, who's like a okay. NASCAR guy who does some Olympic stuff. So he's like, like he's, he's LeBron's body double in like Space Jam 2. And he really? has been for like 10 years. Like he's, he's really done, a, he's, he's had a really good career in terms of go, going to Hollywood. But like, I read the athletic article about he was in it and some of the other Winthrop kids. To me, I think Greg Marshall should be banned for life from coaching, like yeah. in the NCAA. Yep. He should never coach again. And it's because when you have these kids that come to your school, you have a responsibility. Like, they're, in a way, these kids are – they can make you so much money. Like, you look at it. He's paid $3 million a year. Three and it's and because half. his teams have won. Now, he's a good coach. Don't get me wrong. But his players have had to go out and play. Greg Marshall's not making three-point shots from the bench. Like, let's be real about that. The players have got to do it. But it's it's one of those deals where, like, you have a responsibility to all those kids to give them not only a, a positive experience, whether you win or lose, but to help set them up for life. Yeah. So when you tell me that there's a kid that for three years has been sitting in his basement emotionally distraught because he was body shamed by his coach, and I'm not – I'm never going to be somebody that says – you should like your head coach all the time. Right. There are plenty of times where I left practice. And I was like, man, coach painter was kind of an asshole today, <laughs> but I didn't go to Purdue for him to be my friend. Is he my friend today? Yes. Am I glad he's my friend today? Yes. But I wanted him to hold me accountable. I wanted him to make sure that I go from a teenager to an adult and I want him to make me a better player. So I wanted him to coach me hard. And he did. He coached all of us hard. But there's going to be times I, I remember hearing a story. I'm pretty sure it was about, about Gordon Hayward. I heard this through like the grapevine. Because Mark Bartle's team represented, he represents Gordon and he represented me. And I want to say David Lee took Gordon out to dinner one night when Gordon was like a rookie. And David Lee's talking to him. He's a priority guy as well. And after dinner, Mark hit up David Lee and was like, you know, what'd you think? And David Lee goes, man, Mark, that kid is screwed up. He likes his college coach. 
<laughs> he likes Brad Stevens. <laughs> but Brad is not, I mean, Brad is like the nicest dude of all time. But that's like, it's not unusual for guys to be like, man, my college coach, he could be a jerk. But this is so beyond that. Yeah. Like, this is so far beyond what should be acceptable that to me, he should be fired and he should never coach Division One college basketball ever again. Rob, I talked to like 37 former, current players, coaches, and like three defended Greg Marshall. Yeah. Now, again, most off the record. And I tell everybody, everybody said, well, Nobody went on the record. Yeah, because the guys who played there for four years come back and they're revered, right? And they make money there. They do camps. They sign yeah. autographs. And as long as Greg Marshall is the coach, yeah, they're scared. I mean, this guy's got power, right? Winning breeds uh, power, which breeds fear. And a lot of these players, yeah, they're not putting their names. Fred Van Vliet's not going to come out right now and – and, and go after Greg Marshall. Ron Baker's not going to do it. Neither is Landry Shamit. None of those guys have come out, period, which I think is telling, Rob. None of them have come out to back Greg Marshall. Yeah, it's not just that they're saying he did do this. It's it's them saying he didn't do this. That's right. You know, that's what, to me, is the – if somebody came out to Matt Painter and said he was abusive as a coach, man, I would not be able to stand by that. I, I would – you go crazy, yeah, right? With all my teammates, we would all come out and say, "No, he's not." I've been seen about him. six at his maddest. I know what what he is like when he is really pissed, and it's not it's not that. Like it's definitely not that, you know. Yeah, you've had about a half dozen that predate the Shaq Morris team in 2015 and 16 that have come out. Tore Murray, who played in the league, Joe Raglan, uh, Ramon Clemente. There have been a few. But, but again, it's a small, small percentage and not one since 2015, 16 has come out um, to, to, to back him. Now, who has backed him, Rob? Tom Devlin. Tom Devlin is their second biggest booster. Charles Koch, their biggest booster. Tom Devlin used to own Renna Center. He came out and wrote a, basically an editorial uh, letter to the editor where he basically said, um, I stand in support of Greg Marshall. And, and then a guy, Bob Geist, I think that I'm pronouncing it right, from uh, Pizza Hut, uh, he also came out and they wrote something, him and another guy. And, and again, they're buddies with Marshall. I get yeah, it. Right. They're buddies with him. But how can you condone to me? You cannot. It's not 1985. Right. It's not Bobby Knight at Indiana. That, that's over with. You can't like, condone that that's shit. That's like, to no. me, again – the, the guys that I have, people are like, well, you've got it. You, you, you've got it out on Greg Marshall. You've had it out against them. And I'm like, no, no, you got to understand. Greg Marshall's never done one thing to me. Billy Gillespie never did, did one thing to me. But you know what? When you hear of these things going on, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to go after him. Yeah. Because no, you got to stand up for these kids. Like, right? cause if you're not going to and other people aren't in the media aren't going to put it out there, he's going to keep doing this. Yeah. Yep. Like, and again, I've called like four Wichita State games. I have, he's been nothing but nice to me yep. when I've been there. Sure. But if this is happening, he's got to go. It, uh, you know, again, I, I think something will come out this week, but it wouldn't shock me. Listen, it's still money talks. And Tom Devlin, think about this too. Greg Marshall's got a seven year rolling contract at 3.5 million. And if the lawyer, the general counsel from Wichita State says, after looking at all the investigation, the, the, the information from the interviews, if they say, hey, listen, if we fire him, I don't, I don't know. We might have to pay him. What do they do? Or we might have to settle and pay him $15 million. What yeah. do we do? Especially if those boosters are saying, I'm pulling, I'm pulling my money. Pulling my money. Him. Now right. you're, in, you're, <laughs> you're in a tough situation. But yeah. I would hope that school would do right by those kids. You would hope so, but man, I, I don't know which way it's going to go right now. I do not. How could know you ever like? Go. What player would go to Wichita State after this? Here's the one thing up. I'll say about that, Rob. Here's the one thing people have said that to me. They're like, "Well, how is he going to be able to recruit?" And my deal is, Ron Baker was a walk on. He was a walk on. No, there's no question that Greg Marshall gets the most out of these. Like, and is a good coach. coach. Like, yep. uh, that's not right up for debate. He does a good job, but but still, if you want to win at the level that Wichita State has been winning at. No, you're 100 percent right. Last year, you're not just going to. I mean, Ron Baker is a great example. Yeah, but, but he's the he's the exception. 
he is not the norm of the walk-ons that you get. That's right. He's he an NBA player, and yeah. he plays high-level EuroLeague basketball. Right. Like so, if he can, hey, if he can keep doing that with walk-ons, then Greg Marshall might be the greatest coach in the history of the planet. So while I do appreciate that example, that might not be what he does with every walk-on that comes to Wichita State. You know what you'll want to be at if Greg Marshall keeps his job. Uh, you will want to be at the Peach Jam next year in July uh, when I attend the Peach Jam and see Greg Marshall and I sit next to him. Does well, Greg Marshall. It might, be, it might look like uh, that clip from Canada when we touched. Totally is. Or the clip when he punched Jack Morris. You better, you better bring your bodyguards, what you better do. <laughs> I'm bringing you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> you won't see me in Augusta, South Carolina. I want to ask has anybody said what happened to the practice footage from the chef i mean i'm sure it's been out of here but a, a player had said to me one of the players i talked to said that the, the that he told them to destroy the tape i can't confirm that i don't know that for certain how about this one rob there were boosters in there there were a couple boosters in there i don't know who they were That's cbs right. cbs was in there filming men of march no. so they were in there yes now they may have they may have turned off the footage by then because usually when those things happen, I've been in enough of those. They get what they can. They don't usually stay till the very end of practice. A lot, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll stay stretching, for now. They're shooting. They're right. not like they're doing like the most basic. Right. Yeah. How about that? Wow, that is that is so crazy. Crazy. I'm Absolutely. surprised though. I was. I love to think about myself in that situation as a player. Your teammate gets punched by your coach. Like, and then he gives some half ass apology. How, I don't understand, like, how, how these kids, and I, I get it, like, you're, he's in a position of power. He's, you're 18 to 22. That's so what Shaq different. told me. Shaq's like, well, what am I going to do? Punch a, no, no, I'm not coach. saying punch you back. I'm what? just saying, like, go to the AD. But maybe they're like, hey, the AD and him are tied. Like, it's they not going to matter. I I think they probably were at that point. Maybe they yeah. still are. I don't know. Right. I, I just think it's it's so crazy that all it took was, a uh, all right, guys, about what happened yesterday, uh, we moved past it, and then everybody just is like, okay. like, yeah. Right. That's right. wild. 